Continuation Perfect Redemption Plan Part 3 Page 54 2. Jesus the True and Good Shepherd Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He who does not enter by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter or doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. John 10 verse 1 to 5 I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. John 10 verse 11 Jesus earned the right to be the shepherd of all, who will put their faith in him and be born again. He is the only shepherd that we follow to the death. He is the only one we trust with our life. No one else on earth died for you and me but Jesus. If anyone on earth asks you to follow him or her blindly, without questioning his or her authority or decisions, because they think it is a theocracy, do not follow such people. They did not die for you, but Jesus did. Paul said, Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? So, why is it that each one says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas. 1 Corinthians 1, 12-13 Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one? 1 Corinthians 3, verse 5 I had to dissociate myself from a ministry who believed in healing because they became overly zealous about their ministers. Many times I believed that that ministry had turned into a personality cult, an excessive public admiration for devotion to their leader. Some of their leaders and members were now dressing up and cutting their hair like the main leader of that ministry. That ministry secluded them from local churches and having fellowship with other believers who did not believe the way they did. They would not believe anything shown to them from the Bible unless it was coming from their main leader. When they talked, they would always say, Our main leader says, our main leader says, and our main leader says. And they so wanted to differentiate themselves from other Christians, thinking that they had a special revelation of the written word of God. When they talked, they would always say, This message, since when you join this message, tell me why each one of us should defend this message. The night before one of their meetings, the Lord gave me two scriptures. I did not know why, but the Lord knew they would ask during that meeting, Why do you think each one of us should defend this message? Thus, during the meeting, I told them, Open 1 Corinthians 3, 4, 9, and read it. For while one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? but ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to each. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither is he who plants anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. So he planting and he watering are one, and each one shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For of God... We are fellow workers, a field of God, and you are a building of God. 1 Corinthians 3, 4-9 I said to them, You are still carnal believers according to Paul. If what you are teaching on healing is the written word of God, why do you not just say it is the gospel? When you say this message... You already sound like a cult, for every cult started because someone thought he or she had a special revelation of the word of God. 
Paul tells again, These things, brothers, I have in a figure transferred to myself and Apollos for your sakes, so that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, so that no one of you may be puffed up against one another. For who makes you to differ from another? And what do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as if you had not received it? 1 Corinthians 4, 6-7 And I explained to them how the late founder of their ministry was a good man, and he learned his healing teaching under another man, and also how their new leader also, who is carrying on the ministry, learned under different preachers before joining the current ministry that he now oversees. So like Paul says, it is not about Apollos or about Paul or about Peter. They were just ministers God used to teach you the truth about a particular aspect of the gospel. When you gave them a prophecy or word of knowledge or shared a testimony of healing, God has done through you, they did not have a scriptural response. They were ascribing the glory to you. They sounded like spiritual groupies. I, Jerry, hate it when people try to ascribe the glory to me, for it is God who works in me both to will and do for his good pleasure. Philippians 2 verse 13 The way to acknowledge the service of a man or woman of God is not the way the world acknowledges the service of a rock star or football player. For the world, it is all about the rock star and the football player. But for the man or woman of God, it is all about God. When I finished updating this Bible study on the Lord is my shepherd, I went to bed. And that night at 2200, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, The Twenty-Four Elders. I woke up, opened my Bible to read Revelation 4. In Revelation 4, we have the throne of God and first of all the four living creatures standing before that throne and then twenty-four thrones around the throne of God, on which the twenty-four elders, clothed in white clothing and having crowns of gold on their heads, sit. Now, the four living creatures John saw are the seraphim Isaiah saw in his vision of the throne of God. As it is written, In the year that King Uzziah died, I then saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is Jehovah of hosts, the whole earth full of his glory. Isaiah 6 verse 1 to 3. Then, I remembered the explanation the Lord gave to Reinhard Bonnke of the reason why each seraphim used his two wings to cover his face and two to cover his feet when standing before the throne of God. The Lord said to Bonnke, The seraphim are very beautiful and glorious creatures. They do not want to upstage God, steal the show from God, draw attention to themselves away from God. The face talks about our beauty and the feet about the spreading of the gospel. They covered both their face and their feet. In the presentation of the gospel, we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus, and present to the people the beauty of his holiness, not ours. As Paul says, for we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 5 And the psalmist says, Ascribe unto the Lord the glory due unto his name, and worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Psalm 29 verse 2 Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Psalm 96 verse 9 Lucifer, who was one of the archangels, did not want to worship God in the beauty of his holiness. He did not want to preach Christ but himself, so that people will worship him like they worship God. 
and we know how badly it ended for Lucifer, as we have explained in length in the first Perfect Redemption Plan Bible study. And the first living creature was like a lion, and the second living creature like a calf. The third living creature had the face of a man, and the fourth living creature like a flying eagle. And each one of the four living creatures had six wings about him, and within being full of eyes. And they had no rest day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures gave glory and honour and thanks to him who sat on the throne who lives for ever and ever, the twenty-four elders fell down before the one sitting on the throne, and they worshipped him who lives for ever and ever, and threw their crowns before the throne, saying, O Lord, you are worthy to receive glory and honour and power, because you created all things, and for your will they are and were created. Revelation 4, verse 7 to 11. The twenty-four elders also worshipped God who sits on the throne. They left their own God-given throne and fell down, removed their God-given crown of gold, symbol of the glory God bestowed on them, and placed it at the feet of the one sitting on the throne. The disciples of Jesus and the prophets of old learned to cover their spiritual face and spiritual feet so that they would never upstage God. Peter explained to the people who saw him healing the lame man at the gate beautiful of the temple, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why do you look so intently at us, as though by our own power or own holiness or own godliness we had made this man walk? Acts 3 verse 12 the name of Jesus, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Acts 3 verse 16 Peter and John did not think they were holier than the people, but their holiness was the imputed holiness of Jesus, and faith in Jesus and the use of the name of Jesus did the miracle. The Bible is a whole book that needs to be read from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation. Jesus taught his disciples well, just like the prophets of old and all the angels, seraphim and cherubim, are taught to ascribe the glory, honor, power, righteousness and holiness to the one who sits on the throne. They learnt in those three and a half years with Jesus to always give the glory back to God, even though they also were co-laborers together with God. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9 Jesus taught us, As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he who eats me or feeds on me, even he shall live by me. John 6 verse 57 they learned to ascribe the glory to Jesus Christ and not to themselves. Jesus taught us, he who speaks of himself seeks his own glory, but he who seeks the glory of him who sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. John 7 verse 18 when we stand before people, we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus who sent us. Neither do we preach the beauty of our holiness, but the beauty of His holiness. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 5, Psalm 96 verse 9, and Psalm 29 verse 2. My prayer is that nobody our disciple will be zealous for Jerry, but you will be zealous for Jesus Christ and his written word. May we ascribe all the glory and holiness to the one who sits on the throne and worship him, casting our crown at his feet. Jerry does not differ from any of you when you have the revelation of the Word of God contained in the My Weekly Milk Bible Studies and become doers of them, even you will be greatly used by God more than Jerry has ever been. That is my prayer. May you move from saying Jerry says to it is written, it is written and it is written. 
like Jesus exemplified for us his confrontation with the devil, Matthew 4 and Luke 4. Jerry is pointing you to Jesus Christ and to his written word. Paul did not have a special revelation. If you have been reading these My Weekly Milk Bible Studies, you have discovered by now that everything Paul said, Peter said, John said, and even Jesus said, was already written from Genesis to Malachi. That is why Peter could commend the writings of Paul to the church, and the Christians of Berea searched the scriptures from Genesis to Malachi every night to find out whether what Paul taught them was in line with the Old Testament, Acts 17, verse 10 to 13, and 2 Peter 3, verse 16. Paul himself wants us to know and be assured that he only taught and spoke in accordance with the Old Testament, saying, Therefore, having obtained help from God, I stand until this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying no other things than those which the prophets, Joshua to Malachi, and Moses, Genesis to Deuteronomy, said was going to happen. Acts 26 verse 22 at times I have seen believers elevating ministers of Christ as if they were gods. They almost worship those ministers of God and they no longer question what comes out of the mouth of those ministers. Brothers and sisters, nobody, no matter how much we respect and love them, must take the place of Jesus and his written word in our heart. The Christians of Berea, no matter how much they loved Paul and respected his apostleship to the Gentiles, they searched the scriptures daily to find out what Paul taught was lining up with the word of God from Genesis to Malachi. Paul commended those Christians of Berea, Acts 17 verse 10 to 11. The Lord is our shepherd or our guide. When we become born again, we can enjoy the divine guidance of the Lord. Please read the Bible study on divine guidance. Our days of wandering in the wilderness are over. Our guide, Jesus, is here. We are the sheep of his pasture and we know his voice. Some born-again believers disagree with Jesus. They say they do not know the voice of God. But Jesus says, they know my voice and they follow me. It is high time to start agreeing with the word of God and not with how we feel. The Lord shall guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and make fat your bones and you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Isaiah 58 verse 11 the Lord shall guide you with his counsel, Psalm 73, verse 24. The prophet Ezekiel received that revelation of the new covenant when Jesus would die for us and become our shepherd. The Lord said, I will make a new covenant with them, Ezekiel 34, verse 25. Part 2, 1. The shepherd seeks and finds that which is lost. Ezekiel 34, 11 and 12 For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock in the day that is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. Jesus, our shepherd, is not only seeking the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but he says when he died on that cross, he made it possible for the Gentiles, who once were not his sheep, to come into his fold. Therefore he said, Other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd, even Jesus. John 10 verse 16 The death and resurrection of Jesus our shepherd made it possible for Jews and Gentiles to become one new man, one flock. Paul explains to us, Now in Christ Jesus you who were once afar off are made near by the blood of Christ. 
for he is our peace, he making us both one, Jews and Gentiles, and he has broken down the middle wall of petition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so that in himself he might make the two, Jews and Gentiles, into one new man, making peace between them, and so that he might reconcile both to God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity in himself, and he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. Ephesians 2 verse 13 to 17 For through him we, both Jews and Gentiles, have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens, native of the same town, the Jerusalem above, the mother of all born-again believers, as it is written in Galatians 4 verse 26, with the saints, and of the household of God, Ephesians 2 verse 18 to 19. Our shepherd Jesus made it possible for all of us to have the same access to God because when we became born again, he gave us the same Holy Spirit. The same access Paul had to the Father is the same access you and I have to the Father. Better than that, the same access to the Father Jesus has is the same access you and I have. Let no one deceive you that they have a better access to the Father than you have. Our shepherd Jesus made it possible by his death for you and me to have the same access to the Father that he has. We are now in Jesus' fold, members of the household of God. We dwell under the same roof with God and Jesus because we are sons and daughters of God. We live in the same city, our Jerusalem above, where we are seated with Christ at the right hand of the Father. To be continued.